principle of stitch and glue construction is simple. Pre-cut plywood panels are joined along their edges with epoxy and fiberglass. This eliminates the need for a complex framework or careful joinery, so anyone with a little patience can do it. First, we wire together plywood panels. Then thickened epoxy glue is spread at the joint to bond the panels, followed by fiberglass cloth for extra strength and abrasion resistance. This wood is very thin, but I'd have a tough time breaking it. This is a mirror dinghy designed by Jack Holt in the 1960s. It's generally considered to be the first stitch and glue boat to be built in large numbers, more than 70,000 in fact. Except for mahogany rails, hardly any solid wood was used in the boat at all, but it was amazingly light, strong, and stiff. Stitch and glue construction requires two elements, pre-cut plywood panels and strong waterproof adhesives. In building our kayak, we use a lightweight, high-quality African mahogany plywood called okumi. Boat designers determine the shapes of the parts of the kayak, and the builders cut these before they start assembling the hull. You can cut the parts out yourself with a small circular saw or saber saw. At Chesapeake Lightcraft, we use this robotic cutter called a CNC machine to cut out the parts for our boat kits. The CNC machine is unbelievably accurate and fast. Fun to watch, too. For the gluing part of stitch and glue construction, we prefer epoxy resins. Epoxy resins are a fairly new phenomenon. They emerged from the aerospace industry in the 1960s. Epoxy is remarkably strong, durable, and waterproof. It allows us to combine the beauty of wood with the longevity of fiberglass. Epoxy can be finicky to work with, especially if you've never used it before. We're going to spend a lot of time in this video talking about tips and tricks for good-looking epoxy and fiberglass work. Still watching? Don't be intimidated. With about 70 hours of easy work, you can have a varnished kayak like this. Let's get to the shop.